When our hope rests in men and women, our hope is hopeless. As Christians, we have a hope which the world cannot extinguish nor understand. And if we are hopeless because of the failing words of man said to be from God, which we know that God is not a man that he should lie, then we must ask where our hope truly lies. I am deeply concerned that we in the American church are ill-prepared for persecution. I am also concerned that many professing Christians do not know the full gospel of Jesus Christ and that the gospel is being proclaimed less and less in exchange for reliance on dreams, visions, and extra-biblical revelation. This is a great time to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the question begging to be asked is, why is it not? You just heard an excerpt from my latest blog post featured on Love Subscribe. Hi there, and welcome to the Love Sick Scribe podcast, where we talk about biblical truths, current topics, and where we grow in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. I am Dawn Hill, and I am the Love Sick Scribe. Before we get started today, I have a confession to make. This podcast has a level of hypocrisy to it. I say that because I live in the United States. And we Americans tend to place ourselves at the center of everything. We have been in the middle of a contentious and messy election, in case you didn't know that. And we are focusing on that, as is to be expected. But along with that in the prophetic movement and in the charismatic church, there is a great focus on America and the fulfilling of a deluge of prophetic words concerning the outcome of the election. These words have been declared for months and even over the course of the last three years. Now, whether it is intentional or unintentional, a man has been placed at the center of this along with our nation, and it appears that hope was placed in this outcome. Now, I do not want to diminish the sobriety of the time that we are facing, but I have some serious concerns about what is taking place with these prophecies and what has seemed to be damage control because words are seemingly falling to the ground while others are misappropriating scripture and ascribing events surrounding Jesus Christ to a chosen individual. I am not here to argue politics and moral stances, as I am a conservative Christian myself. But what I will say is this, what is going on in these movements should be a wake-up call to believers in Christ that a broken way is being presented. This broken way that I speak of is putting our trust and faith in extra-biblical revelation surrounding dreams, visions, and words. This broken way is ascribing scripture that is speaking of our Savior to a fallible man who needs this Savior, not vice versa. You see, sometimes we fall into this trap that we think that God needs us, but God doesn't need us. It's actually the other way around. We need him. An example of this that I'm talking about may have been seen in posts. You may have seen this on Facebook. I know I did, and it was circulating a lot over the past several days, and it was something like this. It said, quote, for three days, Satan thought that he had the victory too. So let's talk about this for just a second, because this was... Maybe a sore spot for you as well when you saw this. I know it was for me. I'm going to admit that. So let's just make it clear here with a few things when we look at this and break this down before we actually talk a little bit more about the actual prophetic words that were being released. It is clear here that we should understand in Scripture that Satan did not have to wait three days to know that he was defeated. Jesus Christ said it was finished on the cross. He told the thief on the cross that on that day he would be with Jesus in paradise. And Jesus Christ did not suffer in hell as some have taught. Not to mention that we are ascribing a passage of scripture and an event that happened to our Savior. We are ascribing it to a current situation now that has absolutely nothing to do with what is going on. It's like comparing apples to oranges. But this is an example of things that we might say which is not based in truth. So we've all fallen into this trap. We'll put a quote up or we'll say something that sounds really good, really catchy, and it doesn't have basis in truth. And that truth is found in the pages of the Word of God. The written Word of God is what we believe as Christians to be the foundation upon which we stand as far as instruction. And we know and we believe that Second Timothy 3.16 is saying that the Word of God is God-breathed and that it is sufficient for correction, for instruction, for training up in righteousness. And if we believe that, then we need to stick to that and make sure that when we're saying a certain scripture, 
that that's what it means. Now, it would take quite a bit of time to get into all the words released as there are many concerning the election. It, it is hard to keep up with all of them if you've been trying. I've tried to do some research and look at videos and read and stuff, and it's hard to keep up with all of them because they've spanned several years. So there's really not a way to get all those in. But when we start to look at them, we can see there have been dreams and visions, and some have said that they heard one thing and dreamed another. Some are even moving the goalposts for accuracy, stating that it is not over, the election's not over right now, which because of litigation that is going to be taking place starting this week, with that, there is some truth to that. Then one has to ask if we're moving the goalposts for accuracy. Would that be the same sentiment if the results had been concrete on election night and in favor of the prophecies? I'm not sure that it would have. There are some valid questions to ask, and it should be all right to test these things and to ask questions because Scripture says to do such things. But there is a greater issue here that I believe is being overlooked, and that is this. Why are we not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ rather than relying on dreams, visions, and extra-biblical revelation? One thing that has me really concerned in all of this that I want to share with you today, and this is from a personal perspective, is the telling of prophecies and the continuing perception that men and women are drawing people unto themselves rather than to Christ. And what I mean by this is stepping back and observing and noticing that there are people that are professing to be prophets, but yet they are not pointing people back to Christ. They are pointing people back to themselves. They're drawing people back to their following and such by saying, you know, this is my accuracy. This is my track record. These are my dreams. These are my visions. This is what I'm hearing from God. And so, yes, they may be saying the name of God, but it has the appearance. And whether they mean this or not, this is what it looks like. It has the appearance that it's drawing men and women back unto themselves. And when people are pointing to their accuracy and continuing to tell people about their dreams and visions and point to their public revelations, this is a broken way. Now, I am not dismissing the call to pray and to seek God matters. I have been praying during this whole year. (laughs) Actually, I know that I'm not the only one. I'm sure that you have been praying for multiple different reasons. It's been a crazy year. And I've been praying and asking God. uh, And I've been making my petitions known, just like you have, as we are told in Scripture to do in Philippians 4. And notice the word says petitions there. It doesn't say demands or declarations. It says to petition. We are told to pray, to ask God. But what I am saying is that when there is more of a concern about accuracy in and of ourselves than in the truth in accordance with Scripture, then we can get into error. Those who do question the validity of the words are now being told that they are to blame for lack of faith and for lack of understanding of the prophetic. And it almost seems that there is an air of disdain for even daring to question someone who calls themselves a prophet. So I have a question to ask as someone who was part of this movement. There are prophecies released that were released in 2012, which contained dreams that were prophesying of Mitt Romney being elected to the presidency. So what do we do with these dreams and visions and these prophecies? Is it wrong to judge those words as false? And an even more sobering concern that I have is the heavily reliance upon these words and less trust in Christ and in the written word of God. Why are we not pointing people back to scripture and to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as I had mentioned in the beginning? It's a valid question, I do believe, and it's a great concern. If you look at some of the statistics, for example, even people that read the word of God that profess to be Christians... There is a study that came out about a year or so ago. It was conducted, I believe, by 1,800 people were surveyed that were professing Christians. And people that said they read their Bible every day was only about 14 to 15% that read it every day. 33% of those people said they never read the Bible. When I saw that statistic, just in and of itself, I realized that we have a huge problem in the church and especially in the charismatic church. When we are having people that are relying more on prophetic words that they hear, and they are putting their trust in men and women to give them instruction from the Lord, rather than going to the Bible themselves and knowing what things say in the proper context, then it causes us to perish for a lack of knowledge, so to speak. 
It causes us to get off track. We're losing our focus off of Christ. We're not really putting our full hope and trust in him. We're becoming discouraged and frustrated because we're, we're relying on the words of men and women. And we're not putting our trust in God. And we've got to get back to this place where our hope and our faith and our trust is in him and him alone, regardless of what is going on around us. We are to have we are to be salt and light of the earth as believers in Christ. We're not to lose our flavor. We're not, to, you know, it talks about in scripture about that the salt is to not lose its flavor or otherwise all it is good for is to be thrown out and trampled upon. We're told to be a light shining on a hill. That's not our own light. That's the light of Christ shining from us to proclaim who he is and to glorify him and to testify of him and who he is. We are not to put our light, uh, hide our light, to put it under a basket, but we are to shine it forth. And it's going to make it really difficult as believers to fully do that when we are not staying in the word and staying rooted in the truth. And when we don't do that, we're going to get off into all these doctrines. These We're going to be blown and to and fro like it talks about in Ephesians by every wind of doctrine that comes through. And then we're not going to recognize the truth. We're not going to mature in Christ if we don't remain in the word of God and study it and know it in the proper context. So this is a very sobering concern that I personally have. Whether you share my sentiment or not, you may disagree with me. But when I'm looking at this and as someone who was, who was part of this movement, this is the concern that I hold. And I, I'm afraid that people are getting off course and they're getting on a broken way. And they're not staying on the proper way that they should because they're not trusting in Christ and they're not knowing what the Word of God says in context. So some of the questions that I'm even finding myself asking as I'm thinking about these things privately is I'm thinking, why are we not pointing people back to Scripture and to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as I just said? I know that this will not be a popular statement, but I'm going to say it. Dreams and visions are not going to save people. America does not need another dream or vision. And if I could also remind us that America is not the center of everything, though we like to think that it is as Americans, we like to think that we're at the center. We are not. He is at the center and we are to place our trust and hope in him. America needs the gospel. America needs the full gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial and resurrection ministered. The wrath of God ministered. We need to be ministering the truth and proclaiming the truth and the good news that there is a Savior that comes to save us and reconcile us back to the Father and that he was the propitiation for our sins. Every nation needs the full gospel of Jesus Christ. People need to hear the word of God ministered in context, including those in the church You see, sometimes we tend to think that the gospel is just for the unsaved, but the gospel is for us to remember every time we get in a corporate gathering and for us to remember when we're reading the word of God, remember what we were saved from and remember how the gospel applies to our life every single day and that we are able to overcome in our lives, not because of what we do, but what Christ did on the cross. In Acts 20, Paul warned the church at Ephesus of those who would come in. He told them that fierce wolves who would not spare the flock would come and that even from among themselves, there would be those who would speak twisted things to draw away disciples after themselves. Now, when you look up the Greek word for disciples, it essentially means one who abides to the conduct to which they are called. That's what we are to do as disciples of Christ. We are called to a specific conduct. How are we going to know what conduct to which we are called unless we know what the word of God says? These men who were going to draw men unto themselves, draw people unto themselves, they would cause these disciples to turn from Christ and become disciples of them, of theirs. And this is a broken way. This does not lead back to Christ when we are constantly putting our hope and our trust and our faith in fallible men and women. And I mean no ill will towards anyone saying these things. I want you to understand that. I know that it's not a popular message. I know that there are some people that will get upset with hearing these things, but I genuinely don't mean any ill will towards anyone. I have genuine concern for my brothers and sisters in Christ. These, this is why I say these things. I have genuine concern and I am urging 
each of us, to get back into the Word of God and to put our trust in Christ alone. I am concerned, as I said in the beginning, that the American church is not ready for persecution. Now more than ever, people both within the church and outside of the church need to be Thank hearing you for joining me on this Jesus podcast. Christ. If you and would like to connect with to me, you can find me on Facebook and way, on Instagram at Lovesickscribe. And, and if you enjoy reading, feel free to hop on over to Lovesickscribe.com and subscribe to my blog. I've enjoyed being with you today, and I look forward to our next time together as we talk about biblical truths, current topics, and we continue to grow together in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. Blessings to you.